we'll uh, not practice yesterday and today, and then we'll take some questions. And a reminder, uh, no live stream. But I thought we had a lot of energy out there today, and kids got after it. You always want more worry when the weather gets a little cooler. And then they have a little more juice in the practice. So they uh, got a little chippy out there, but that was good for them. So opening up questions. Coach, uh, with Lorenzo, he seems to kind of have this constant positivity. He's always smiling. At least that's what he shows us. And do you see that in him? And uh, if so, when was the first time you kind of noticed that? Well, he's had that since like ninth, tenth grade year of high school. I mean, he's always been a bright-eyed, uh, smiling kid, and he had a great family, and uh, he enjoys the game. He's just uh, really a happy kid. I mean, he enjoys practice. He's fun to be around. Except when he doesn't practice good, then I get mad at him, and he still smiles. So I get madder. But uh, he's a uh, he's a bright kid. Coach, you had um, Elijah as one of your special team players of the week. Uh, how has he developed in that role? And then also as a running back, it seems like he's really done well late in games, being able to you know, get a lot of yards, and obviously had the touchdown. Against yeah, I thought his run was one of the best runs of the day. It wasn't a you know just an open huge hole where he just you know, gashed through anybody. I mean, he made a guy miss. He stutter stepped and, and did a nice job. Um, and he's done a nice job on special teams. I tell you, he works really hard. He's a very prideful kid. Um, it's very important to Elijah that he does well, and uh, he's very attentive in meetings. Uh, he's a joy to work with, and. Um, He's made himself into a good special teams player. How much of him is due to his namesake, who he is, and everything, who his father is, and more into the two way office, like, like you said? You know, I don't think it has anything to do with it. I mean, I think it has more to do with the kind of kid he is. And, uh, you know, he went to a really good high school and really bright kid, and it's important to him. I just, you know, I mean, his name is his name, and I think that, that uh, he works hard regardless of that. Herb, Obviously, when you talk about it, it's explosive plays in the run game. Um, can you emphasize that? Is that a matter of just an execution, or when you watch film, or, you know what, what's what's leading to that? Do you think? Good backs, good movement, a um, couple times, good scheme, blocking downfield by receivers. You know, quarterback putting us in the right play. And there's a lot, there's a lot that goes into an explosive run because you'd like to think that. Even if you block them all, there's usually one left to you know make the tackle. And I think when you combine the fact that we got good backs with a good scheme and uh, receivers blocking downfield, and you know the quarterback putting you in a good play, that's, that's what you get sometimes. Obviously, these you know everybody gets here to play at this level uh, for a reason. But do you sometimes see Elijah make a play like he did late in that game and kind of shake your head at the idea that you know that guy's out there making that play and we've got. We, We've got trouble trying to find the third guy in that rotation enough touches. I mean, is, does it kind of help you set in how good you guys are at that running back position, how talented? Not really. I mean, I think the biggest thing it helps is our defense because Elijah and Brian, they go down and take reps against the defense each day. And uh, they work as scout team backs because I think they need the development. And they get touches during the week. And so um, they're developing, they're getting better. And they take the wear and tear off each other. And there's not really an ego in that group. So um, I think it's a good good thing to have. I don't really think of it as a, a big luxury because everywhere I've been, there's been good backs. Right. You know, I mean, when I coached here running back 2004, I mean, Craig Lumpkin, Thomas Brown, Danny Ware, Tyson Browning, some good players. So it's, it's become the um, norm here. <coughs> How does this group compare? Some of those running back groups you've had both here and at Alabama as well. Oh, well, it's probably deeper. I mean, it's, when you start talking about five deep, it's been around a lot of good four four man rotations, but five is pretty special. Coach, uh, what what's some marching orders for the team tonight on the um, on the playoff rankings being released? Did you tell them don't watch it or do everything you can not to pay attention or even bother? And not really talk about it. To be honest with you, they, the, the, the leadership group kind of handles it and they do a good job addressing it with the players and they relay the message that needs to be taught and we don't really get into it much. Will uh, you watch it? I'm working on South Carolina. I, I'll watch it. I'm going to be up here until 11 watching tape on South Carolina. 
Uh, Coach, when, when you're on a streak like this, the six straight games of uh, you know dominant victories, um, what can you say to the team during the week, particularly the younger guys, to make sure they stay focused and you know, focused on the next game? Well, you don't have to say anything. I mean, they go out and practice. Practice is tough. I mean, we don't go out there in the practice and get a big 28-point lead or anything and shut it down. We, we go at each other. And um, we try to create a culture of toughness and playing hard and we really didn't play that way defensively against Florida. I mean, there's clips all over the field of guys turning down contact, not wanting to hit people, and we showed it to our players. And uh, we have to correct that in practice. And the young players were a part of that. Of course, uh, JR and D'Angelo are related, but JR was telling us last week about their relationship and how he kind of views himself as an older brother and a mentor to them. Uh, what have you seen from that relationship and what kind of impact do you think it has on D'Angelo's uh, progression? Yeah, uh, he is like a big brother. I mean, they, they roomed together when they initially got here, and, and uh, I think it was an easy easier transition for D'Angelo having Jr. here because Jr. they have spent all their summers together. You know, D'Angelo would go out in the summers and train with uh, Jake, Jr.'s dad, and he would take the two boys and go run them, and they grew up like brothers. And Jr. was the older brother, and uh, I think it's been really good for D'Angelo to have Jr. here because Jr. is a very mature kid. Um, he's He's uh, handles pressure really well. Because it seems like every week Matt Landers uh, has the uh, opposing team's best you know receivers jersey on every week. Can you talk a little bit about how valuable he's been in that role? I, mean, I know you you've raved about your look squads this year, and and uh, that's that's a pretty big role to have to take <coughs> on. It seems like every single week. Yeah, he uh, he's he's a force to be reckoned with. I'll be honest with you. I mean, we we talked long and hard in the off week about bringing him up and. And gave him a lot of reps and let him work. He gives us a little something out there at wideout that we really don't have, you know, in that size outside Javon. Um, but I don't know if he's ready yet. He's got to mature a little bit. He's got to continue to improve academically. But he's he's tough on the scout team. He's he's fast. He's long. He's athletic. He's going to be a good player if he keeps his head on straight. What's well, been his attitude and and you know taking on that role because you know you've talked about you know been tougher for those young guys if they're not playing to stay engaged. Has he, has he handled it well? He's been good. He's been good. He, he likes practicing. He goes up and makes plays and he competes with those corners. He's got great length, you know, so he enjoys that part of it. Kirby, you guys have, uh, <coughs> the point differential in the first and third quarters have been particularly lopsided uh, for you guys and your opponents. What's the mindset you want your team to have coming out of the locker room and uh, how much of it is script, how much of it is just practice prep during the week and what other things do you see there? Uh, third quarter, I would say, is probably because we you know, deferred so much. We get the ball, you know. I mean, we get the ball first. It seems like you know the first. I don't really know. You know, we had a lot of three and outs defensively, so we get the ball back to our offense pretty quick, and we've gotten some good good field position for them, and we've had some good punt returns to set up those first drives. It seems like, um, but I think you want to start that way. I mean, you want to play every quarter that way. I can't really pinpoint what it comes down to, you know, having a good plan, having good players, and, and executing. It's preparation is really what it is. What about the words you tell them when they leave the locker room? I mean, I know sometimes too much is made of that, but is there, do you think that plays a part in terms of what message you want them to keep in mind? Not as much as the, the preparation. Are you a speech guy in that way? I mean, do you usually have it at, you know, we don't get to sit in there with you in the locker room. Do you? I say what I feel. I mean, I don't go into a, 600 word passage, but um, I think it's important that they they know what you think this game's going to be about. And I think every game's a little different. I mean, they're all physical, they're all tough, and they're all intense. So I'm going to be intense with the message, but you know, sometimes the message is different than others. And some guys respond to that, some guys don't. You know, I think some guys enjoy that, some guys don't. So each to each his own. You mentioned the deferring at, at the beginning of the game. Is that somewhat in, in mind of how you guys come out of third quarter and how does that kind of impact what you guys do come out of that third quarter? Uh, well, I mean, we, we've won some tosses, we've lost some. So some of them, when we have won, it seems like we've deferred a lot because we feel like our defense is an older part of our team, really. Um, but it doesn't matter. You're going to get you know possession at the beginning or possession in the second half. You want to be really sound in what you do. And uh, you want to go in at halftime and have a plan for the second half of what you want to come out and do some of which might complement what you've already done. And uh, I think that's always important to come out and be able to change it up. For Jake Fromm, how much uh, 
but with the fact that he's been around, you know, the offense players who have been around, played a lot of football as opposed to maybe last year with Jake, where he was still kind of having to wreck guys and, and that sort of thing. How much of a difference does it make for him? Oh, it makes it much easier. I guess you're talking about the players around him being yes, older. Yes, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Terry, you got to figure year three, Javon's year two, Riley's year two. I mean, a lot more, I mean, the backs are all, you know, older, been around with the exception of Swift, tight ends year two. I mean, it's a more mature team, more mature offense, so <coughs> it certainly helps him. But he also has a good command of the system and, and knows where people are supposed to be and knows what he's looking for, so. So maybe a little bit of an odd question. You, you, you're somebody that I feel like I've heard say it. You're constantly always looking for a way to, to improve here and there, the smallest thing. How often do you guys prepare for a team like a, a you know, a team you may not see that often or a style of play that often? And and you know, when you work through scout team, you pick out a thing or two that you think you might want to move into what you guys do and, and kind of adapt it to your own stuff. Are you saying we pick up something from a from, team Yeah, from, from whoever you're playing, you're studying. I mean, how often is that? Yeah, it happens. I mean, it happens. We, I'll see a play that a team's running, say Missouri, and we say, hey, they have run this play. You know, Jim, it's pretty interesting. You might look at it. Because what happens is you're crossing over opponents left and right. So I'm watching Missouri against South Carolina, right. you know, and you're putting mental notes away that, hey, Missouri did that and that worked. Maybe it'll work when we play them. Hmm. So you're always looking for uh, crossover stuff, and we're all in a plagiarism business as far as plays. We're copying what other people do. Defensively, the same way. You know, you watch pressures and you try to copy what other teams do. Two more questions, Coach. You brought the whole kind of wearing suits during the dog walk thing over. Do you ever like check what they're kind of wearing beforehand, or to check off on that, or uh, kind of what's your philosophy on that? <coughs> I'm a little more worried about the game at that point. I mean, I, I, I encourage our strength staff and support staff to uh, enforce the proper rules. But to be honest with you, our kids do a good job of it, so I don't get into it too much. Must Jeff said that uh, you, could, you could never beat him in basketball. I guess he's talking about his team versus your team. Is that, is that kind of the truth or what? I'll let him do the talk. Thanks, guys. <laughs>